Hello, welcome back again. It's about monsters. Yes, you can see the Tome of Beasts, uh, the first one, the second one, by Kobold Press in front of you. Uh, that's not really, we're not talking about any of those monsters today. No, we're actually going to be going back to a monster from mythology and folklore, and it's a, uh, it's a hound. That's right, it's a hellhound. It's also referred to as something else, so it's not just the hellhound, it might be called the black dog, um, so there's a couple of different names, and I'm going to go over as much of that information as I possibly can. I'm putting up a poll so you can take part in that if, if you want to. Feel free to uh, drop your suggestions in and ideas into the chat. So I'm going to do the monster lore for the Hellhound. Once I've done the Hellhound monster lore, I'm going to then open it up and we're going to build some stuff. So we've been building like 100 different monster homebrew traits uh, or special abilities, things like that. And so I'm going to continue that, that vein. We're going to finish those off, but not until I have talked about the Hellhound. So grab some food, some drink, make sure you are comfortable and ready for this. And I will try to give you uh, the best ride I possibly can for, uh, for your time. Okay, let's do this, shall we? A bit of, bit of water would help, and uh, we'll go straight into it. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about the Hellhound. Now, whether you're using the Hellhound for your role-playing game in general, or for Dungeons and Dragons, or Pathfinder, Castles or Crusades, Tunnels and Trolls, whatever game system you're playing, it doesn't matter. The concept behind the Hellhound is essentially the same. Or is it? Because actually there's quite a lot going on here when we talk about the Hellhound. And so for today, that's my topic, is to break that all down for you. Uh, what are you going to get for today? Well, I'm going to go over the, the basics of the Hellhound in terms of monster lore. I'm going to give you biology, which you probably don't know very much about because there isn't very much there. Mythical and legendary monsters and creatures don't usually have that sort of thing. Uh, I'm also going to do how to use them in combat, how to go about uh, uh, dealing with their habitat, society, ecology, how to incorporate them into your adventure, how to defeat them if you're trying to do that, and the origins of the Hellhound, because there's multiple origins for the Hellhound. Hellhounds or Blackhounds are canines from another plane of existence. Sometimes Hell, sometimes it's the Underworld, sometimes in fact it's Heaven, and you're probably saying, well why is it called a Hellhound? But that's why they're called Blackhounds as well, or other spirit hounds. The afterlife, another place that they might be coming from. So they, they don't actually reside necessarily in hell every single time when you look at the folklore and the uh, mythology behind them. A hellhound resembles a large hound with black or rust brown fur with red glowing eyes. And that's usually the depiction that you get. The hellhound's uh, coat, uh, its fur, its teeth, its tongue are all soot black. You'll notice this creature generally is completely black. They are designed to be unseen, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, hellhounds stand taller than other dogs from the, the foot to the shoulder and have a distinctive odour uh, of smoke or sulphur. The hellhound howl is it sounds very eerie and it has a sort of a, like a hollow tone to it and sends like a shiver down your spine and the idea behind the hellhound is to scare people uh, generally that's how we use them is like how do we scare somebody well you can use a hellhound that's the way to do it the eyes of the hellhound so let's do the biology there isn't very much out there so i had to pull this together the eyes of the hellhound are very important in some ways, they're very similar to a dog's, uh, who, because dogs have more rod-shaped receptors in their retina than most other creatures. And, uh, and as a result of having quite a lot of rod-shaped receptors, they have good night vision, and the same applies to the hellhound. Unfortunately, there are mysteries yet to be discovered about the hellhound's biology, because they also appear to have X-ray vision, infrared heat vision, and... Um, they have some sort of a, there's, there even seems to be like a supernatural aspect to the hellhound sight, because they can see invisible creatures, detect uh, extra-dimensional um, planar travellers, 
and spirits. You may even say they can probably detect you if, if you're hiding. Uh, so they can see through stuff. This is why I said x-ray vision. A hellhound's nose has at least 200 million cells in the nose, allowing the hell and the hound to actually smell anything miles away. So its ability to pick up a, um, a scent is very, very good. The ears of a hellhound are butterfly jointed. This allows them to change direction for greater accuracy to detect the, the position of a noise or sound. So they, they kind of like shift around, like little, uh, I guess you might say it's, it's like a little receptor, like a little uh, satellite disc. <laughs> it's not a satellite disc, but that's, I suppose, the best way to describe it. There are 42 teeth in the jaw of a hellhound, uh, which include four canine teeth for grabbing, pulling, wounding, ripping, flesh, and crushing bone. The hellhound have, well, some of them have fire breath. Um, there doesn't appear to be a biological mechanism that explains this phenomena, so it's likely a supernatural origin for the, uh, the actual fire breath. The skull of a hellhound is longer than a, a normal wolf or um, dog, and this allows this longer, larger skull uh, allows for extensive housing of muscle mass in the cheeks to aid in its extreme biting force. That's why it has that there. Because of the, the skull of a hellhound being longer and larger, there is space for an advanced cerebral uh, cortex that is likely responsible for much of its unusual senses and tactical behavior because it's a smart hunter. Okay, the, the actual combat aspect of a hellhound. Uh, you could play them just like any wolf or dog if you really wanted to, but I have something for you. So combat for the hellhound. Hellhounds are clever hunters that operate in packs. A hellhound doesn't bay like a normal dog uh, while hunting. Uh, instead, it remains very, very quiet and silent. Hellhounds move with greater stealth than most other um, canines of their type, making it easier for them to, to, to surprise their prey. One or two of the, um, so one or two hellhound um, of the pack will actually sneak up on its quarry while the others form like a ring around it. It's the same um, hunting tactic as a wolf, generally. You usually have uh, one or two from the, the pack who actually um, chase down the quarry or the prey and the others set up an ambush of some kind. The leading hellhound in the pack will spring from an ambush attacks the nearest victim and attempts to drive the other prey towards the rest of the pack who are waiting somewhere. If the prey doesn't run away, the rest of the uh, hellhound pack will close quickly to pull down uh, that victim or prey to the ground. So this is the normal hunting process of any wolf, but hellhounds do exactly the same sort of thing. While hellhounds are pursuing fleeing prey, they may, they, this is where they may actually howl or bay. And this is usually to communicate with the other hellhounds what's going on if they have to spread out. Not all hellhounds have the ability, same abilities or powers, such as fire breath. Much to your surprise, I'm assuming you're like, oh, all hellhounds must breathe fire, but not necessarily. Hellhounds uh, attack first by breathing fire at an opponent if they have this ability, and then they follow up with their teeth, biting and pulling the creature to the ground, and once it's on the ground, that's where it will finish it off. <clears throat> Usually with a killing blow, uh, whether it be a large cat or a, a canine or a dog or a hound in this case, it's always going to go for the throat, piercing it with its uh, canines, uh, causing blood flow, and of course, uh, once you pierce into the throat of anything, it will bleed out very, very quickly. And they just hold it there until it, uh, it finally succumbs to uh, loss of blood flow, or loss of blood. <clears throat> okay, so if a hellhound grabs a victim in its jaw successfully, it will breathe fire on the victim. So just because it's bitten down on something, if it can breathe fire, it will. And you are right up there in the blast furnace. Hellhounds have a variety of different defenses depending on the individual hound. So... As a general rule, all hellhounds have immunity to fire, but dependent on the hellhound you're dealing with and the type, it may have other defenses that aren't well known, so they, they can vary. The hellhound's keen hearing means that it's really surprised by enemies, so trying to ambush a, any kind of hellhound is pretty unlikely. 
I just need a drink of water. <clears throat> okay, the, <clears throat> the habitat and society of your hellhound. Hellhounds communicate with vocal sounds, body postures, scent, touch, and taste. That's how they communicate. Much like a, um, a, a hound, a dog, or a wolf, again. Hellhounds are often native to those extra-dimensional places noted for their hot, fiery landscapes, but not always. The hellhound roams in nomadic packs. Uh, hellhounds on the primal plane are often summoned there to serve the needs of an evil creature. Most hellhounds later escape into the wild uh, while on the material plane. And uh, they will always be generally trying to seek to go back to their original place or home. Each pack of hellhounds is led by an alpha leader, like a, a wolf pack. The diet of a hellhound is similar to that of any normal canine. So that's how they generally eat. And if you were unaware, canines are actually not necessarily meat eaters. They're actually omnivores, but their diet tends to be primarily meat. The hellhound roams a wide area of about 14 square miles, centered on their den once they have set up a den. Uh, pack territories uh, for the hellhound can overlap. This can create problems at times. A hellhound does not uh, easily reproduce on the material plane or the physical um, physical world. Uh, it's possible, but it's much more easy for it to do it where it was uh, originally um, uh, formed. It's an original home. Hellhound puppies are born in litters of between two and eight puppies. Unfortunately, hellhound puppies... Uh, burp flame uncontrollably at least once a day while they are in the puppy form. So a lot of things wind up catching on fire. Prey is usually eaten when it is slain, uh, though some hellhounds occasionally will haul the, the carcass back to their den for later meals. But generally they will tear off sections, consume them, or take those sections back to their den to eat later. Hellhounds are also similar to normal canines in that they may act as retrievers, uh, so they can actually be trained. I'll talk more about that in a second. The ecology of a hellhound. Uh, all hellhounds have uh, very little place in the normal world, because that's not their normal place of residence. Commonly, the hellhound might serve an evil being, but as I said, this is not always the case. Sometimes they have a different purpose. The hellhound is usually a, guard, a guardian for, for a spirit or a powerful creature or being or an important place. So they can fulfill many, many different purposes, but generally it's a guardian or guard of some kind. Hellhounds act as a, a guide for the recently dead or deceased and will lead them to the afterlife, whether that be hell or heaven, uh, so that they don't get lost in the physical world. Uh, this is probably one aspect of the hellhound that a lot of people miss, and this is the fact that they are guides for the dead. Hellhounds cause more forest fires than other creatures, except for humanoids generally. Uh, hellhounds have their, their uses because of their ability to easily detect hidden or invisible creatures, which they are very good at doing. They make excellent watchdogs, <laughs> um, especially... For an intelligent monster such as a fire giant. So if you've got fire giants in your campaign or an adventure, fire giants may well have hellhounds uh, just because they can exist around each other in the environment they're used to. And it's very, the, the environment that a, a, a fire giant lives in is so similar to what a hellhound is used to, they will generally stay with them. Hellhounds can be domesticated if raised from puppies, but there is a 10% chance each year that a domesticated hellhound will go wild, including if fire giants do this. If, you, if you're a fire giant, there's still always a chance they'll run off. Okay, how do you incorporate the hellhound in your adventure? Doesn't matter what you're playing. So Cerebus, the three-headed um, dragon-tailed dog that guards the underworld to Hades, is sort of a good example. If you've got an underworld, then put your, your hellhounds there. Uh, most of these ideas I'm presenting to you, by the way, are from the Game Master Roundtable. And if you go to Wally DM's channel, you'll find a live stream where we talked about the Hellhound uh, with AJ Pickett, Esper the Bard, uh, Dungeon Dad, myself, and Wally DM. 
And if you want to see all those ideas sort of uh, brought to fruition, you can check them out there. Now also, the Keymaster and the Gatekeeper Hellhounds that possess the bodies of the living um, can open up a door to an evil god that intends to destroy the world. Now what you're, you're hearing is Ghostbusters, the first movie. That's essentially what, there are two Hellhounds in the Ghostbusters movie. And they essentially possess the bodies of the living for a very particular purpose. So I'm presenting that idea. It's not uncommon if you look at other types of lore, mythology, and, and folklore that uh, hellhounds would be capable of possessing the living. Because they're not, in every respect, a, a monster. Um, they have a very sort of supernatural, spirit-like aspect to them as well. Huge invisible hellhounds that hunt the living and drag them back to hell. So if you want to make things really scary for your players, then make them invisible and make them large, larger than they would normally be. Packs of hellhounds feeding off the, the evil lava souls in the river Styx is another idea. You would probably find them uh, in hell or the nine hells if you're using the nine hells, but any kind of hell would do. Uh, you could also have a dessert called the the flame creme hell boule, or is it hell hound? <laughs> the, the flame creme hell hound. Uh, and it can look like a black dog, you know, when you, you put it on the plate, there you are. It's time to have a hellhound for your dessert. A fiend hunter that uses uh, a pack of hellhounds. Now, <clears throat> what I'm referring to here when I say a fiend hunter is somebody who hunts down fiends, demons and devils. Um, and they, they, what they've done is they've, they've figured out the true name of the hellhound. And by calling it by its true name, they are able to um, retain some sort of control over them or at least negotiate with them. And these hellhounds go out and hunt down demons and devils so that they can be vanquished. You could do this with your player characters. They could have somebody within the group who is a fiend hunter and uses hellhounds. You could also have a hellhound sledge dog team for traveling, say, the snowy um, tundra or landscape at night, or maybe you have a, a sled team of hellhounds to travel across a, a flamey plane of existence. Uh, hellhounds can be pets of fire giants, as I mentioned before, but they can also be the pets and companions to the erifit and fire elementals, so not just the fire giant. You could also have a hellhound puppy that is adopted by a group of adventurers that causes lots of big problems. If you know, if you've had a dog before and you know what it's like to have a puppy, this is a good idea. Um, well, you can have a lot of fun messing with the players with this. As I had mentioned before, hellhounds can be um, spirits, spirit guides uh, that allow those who have recently died um, make their way back to the, the afterlife, to heaven or hell, whichever you choose. Uh, so that they don't get lost on the physical world. I think this is one of the more attractive ideas where it, it's going kind of outside of what people usually use your hellhound for. And then of course you could also have packs of hellhounds attacking and feeding on the troops of two warring nations at night. So um, an example would be during World War II there was a, a story that um, the Allies, the American soldiers, were fighting the, the Nazis, the Germans, and uh, at, at night, as a, you know, during the day the, the battle would go on, but at night things would get quiet and what they would wind up happen, have happening is that these dogs that they, was, they swear were hellhounds were killing the troops or tearing them apart or injuring them and then dragging them off. So pretty horrible stuff, but uh, apparently a, a true story. And if it's not a true story, it makes a good story that you can use. How to defeat the hellhound? Well, avoid standing in the blast furnace of a hellhound that breathes fire. Probably the first thing you want to try and do. Hellhounds need to get close to harm you, so pick a, a spot a long distance from them if you can. Uh, standing on an elevated or a, um, a, an area that's been lifted up. Uh, so particularly a place that can't be climbed by a dog is probably the most sensible thing to do. So if you can stand on a big rock or stay in a tree, uh, dogs don't generally climb trees. Spread out so the pack can't focus uh, on one single player character. It's probably a very smart thing to do. So yes, uh, because if you've got hellhounds that breathe fire and they're breathing in like a cone, 
then you're probably going to wind up with a, more than a few of you getting hit at the same time. So spreading out will help uh, reduce the amount of pain that you suffer in the burns. Uh, don't try to flee from a hellhound. They move way too quickly to do so. So unless you are flying, you probably won't get away. So running away won't work. Now the origins of the hellhound. Now I already mentioned um, Cerebus the, from ancient Greek mythology. Uh, you know, the, the guardian um, three-headed dog uh, in the underworld. But Scandinavia, uh, there's a lot of folklore around the hellhound from Scandinavia. But also Gamar, now I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly, but it's spelt G-A-R-M-R from Norse mythology. Uh, so Gamar. And then there's the black dogs of English folklore, which you may or may not know of. They're sort of a different version of the hellhound. We also have the, the fairy hounds of Celtic mythology. Uh, and lastly, the hellhound has been appropriated by Dungeons and Dragons creators over the last 40 years. But the history of the hellhound, the black dogs and the, the fairy um, hounds or spirit hounds has been around for hundreds, thousands of years. So uh, yeah, there's a lot there to play with if you want to really up to you what you want to do with this. I think it's a fun creature to incorporate into your adventure. It has a lot of potential. Now I'm hoping that this was useful to you and if it was, fantastic. I want to thank all of my patrons who've been supporting me on Patreon. Of course everything that I talk about here will go up onto Patreon if you're looking for it. There are a whole lot of notes on the Hellhound that will go there. Uh, also I want to thank everybody who's been watching this live stream and uh, my videos I do appreciate it it's a, it's a big deal okay it makes a huge difference and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s okay just give me a second I'll drink some water and we'll get uh, get back to chat Back to the chat back to the chat okay let me see what have we got here I've got my head is this actually on? Didn't do anything. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just making sure that little button was not supposed to be pressed. <laughs> okay. How are, how is everybody doing today? Spirit Wolf, how are you doing, Spirit Wolf? Hello. We have Matt. Hello, Matt. How are you? Is it Matt Faulkner. Matt Faulkner. How how are you, Matt? And we have Nacho Nacho Man. Nacho Nacho Man is a patron and supports me on Patreon. Thank you. Dungeons and Chronics is here. Hello, Dungeons and Chronics. We've got Cameron F. Um, I like using the Hellhounds as as party leaders for hobgoblins. Special op missions in areas with a, a large population of homeless dogs that can be ruled over and used for mayhem. Oh, that's really, really entertaining. Uh, I like that idea, Cameron. That's very funny. Great stuff. Um, Spirit Wolf. I have to remember that. What do you have to remember? What did I say that was so entertaining? <laughs> Which game are we? Are you covering? Which game am I covering? I'm covering all of the games, Cameron. I cover all the games now. So Hellhound Monster Lore covers all of it. It doesn't matter what game you're playing. I don't care anymore. So I want to cover all of it. So it can work in with anything. Okay, now the workshop, whether you believe it or not, we're going to be building some more monster traits that you can use for, because I'm all about you making your own stuff nowadays, and we've been trying to build some uh, 100 different things, so some 100 um, percentile tables, and we're going to do monster traits, and the monster traits are not necessarily key to 5e, they could be used for 5e, they could be used for 4e, 3.5, Pathfinder, I don't care, you know, like, Cast, uh, castles and crusades, tunnels and trolls, um, anything. It doesn't matter. Okay, not not going to be prejudiced in any way whatsoever. So yes, that's the that's the plan for today. I am happy. Laugh out loud. Great verbal um, dancing with that that one. Oh, thank you. I I feel like I was dancing some way. Uh, <laughs> In a live stream, if you haven't ever done live stream on YouTube, you'll find that there is a lot of verbal dancing going on. 
just to make sure it all works. It just that's just how it is. Okay, so the poll we've got eleven votes, and have you ever used or encountered a hellhound in your role playing game? So we got thirty six percent yes, no forty five percent okay, not sure okay so good okay well it's good to see that's zero, and just watching eighteen percent, right. So I am going to I've got my 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 chat up. I'm just going to open a few documents. We'll close this document here so I don't mess this up because I've got to turn this into a into a uh, a finished piece of work for patrons. Uh, hopefully, I will find time at the end of the week. I went to the Ant Man last Friday, and there was a um, a, a nasty weather front, so things got a bit complicated, and I just ran out of time. Um, I don't regret going and seeing the Ant Man, by the way. I I'm not going to give you away spoilers. Don't worry, I won't say anymore. Don't run away. I'm not going to say anything about the movie. It's all good. Right, so I'm just opening up a couple of uh, files that I've already started. These files are getting closer and closer to completion. And with any luck, we will be able to uh, play with them today and, um, and get them closer to where they need to be, which is finished. Finished. We want them finished. Oh, my head is way too big. <laughs> Let's make it smaller. And that. There. There. There, there we go. There we go. All right. Uh, now, I might just grab this. So, I guess the best way I can explain uh, what we've been doing with the monster traits is monster traits are things that don't require you to, you don't have to use an action for the monster trait to work. In other words, the, the, the monster trait is always in effect. It doesn't go away. Okay. So I, I will scroll through and show you all of the stuff we've done. We, we're about just under halfway through. The truth of the matter is we're probably further further through than that. It's just there's stuff on another document that I probably have to transfer over. Uh, let's grab this book here because I've been helped. Now, for those of you who are unsure how you can help in this process, my advice is just open up any monster book you have. There's usually something in a monster book that will have a trait that we may not have included here and we can include today. Right, I'm going to get rid of the hat, open my door because I'm I'm actually sweltering now. It's uh, it's really, really warm. It's It's gotten hotter just recently. Oh, there, that's better. Okay, now you can hear the uh, cicadas and my, my niece and the, the uh, heavy equipment that is tearing up the property next door, scraping the ground. It's going to be fun times, fun times. So you, you couldn't pay for these, uh, you couldn't pay enough for these uh, extra sound effects, I tell you now. <laughs> uh, dear. All right, so the hat's got to go too. I can't deal with that. Some water. Now, I'm going to try to put these into alphabetical order so that uh, I don't get lost amongst the, uh, the bushes. Otherwise, I probably will. The bushes will get thick. Okay, so uh, glasses are going to be on and off all the time. I can see this now. Let me just go over to that point. So this here are the traits that we have so far. I haven't filled out all of it. Um, so what I'll do, actually I'll just, I'll just do this now, the copy, the blood, of the creature is acidic, so acidic blood, you know what I'm talking about, this is alien, um, and so we have quite a few. I've, I've done, done my best to try to put things into order. Some of these things I don't think are going to stay. If you see there's a, a yellow mark, it means I'm not too sure if I'm happy with the way it is and whether I need to change it. Um, we've got all sorts of things here. So what I will do is I will very quickly read out so you kind of got an idea of what we've got. And then you can, you'll know um, what you can try to suggest. So we've got Apex Adaption, the creature develops new traits to better suit its current environment. Um, acid Blood, um, Acid Saliva, pretty obvious what they are. 
Ambidextrous, the creature can use all limbs with equal skill. Uh, Amorphous can change shape and fit through narrow spaces. Um, Amphibious can swim normally in water. Uh, Anti-magic void, the magic doesn't affect the creature. Blind sense can detect anything without using eyes and uses other senses. Uh, Bark, shell or skin, the creature has a layer of protective bark over its body. Um, Bioluminescence, the the biological emission of light um, by a creature, so basically it gives off light. Uh, Blood frenzy, uh, uh, when the creature senses blood it becomes more aggressive. I was trying to duplicate the idea of the shark, but I still don't know if I'm happy with this. Brutal, didn't know what to do with that, so I've just left it as a question mark. Um, Cold-blooded, the creature can survive in extreme low um, temperature environments. Camouflage, the creature can change colour to blend into its um, surroundings. Uh, Detachable claws, claws burrow into the flesh and regrow a week later. Basically, they detach. You know, you you plunge them in and they come come free. Uh, Diamond skin, skin, the the creature's skin is super hard and looks like diamond. Um, echolocation, that's your bat, uh, can detect obstacles using sound waves. Um, fake appearance, which is your false appearance from 5e, if you're familiar with that. The creature appears as something else that is natural or manufactured. So I've used that. Uh, and then fear causes fear and panic of scene. Flight can fly a set distance. Gills, the creature can breathe underwater. Glowing eyes, the creature's eyes glow. Nice, pretty obvious. Inverted legs, the creature can run faster. I don't know how else to sort of put that, so it's it's what's highlighted. And corporal, the creature has no physical um, existence and can pass through solid matter. Uh, infrared vision, and I'm wondering if I should sort of say heat vision, because some people may still be a little bit unsure. Heat vision, the creature can see heat and detect. No, I don't need to do that. It's, it's fine, infrared vision. Those of you who have played older versions of games will understand what it is. The creature can see heat or detect heat waves. Um, omnidirectional vision. The creature can see in a 360 degree arc. Uh, prehensile tail. The creature has a tail that can attack and is capable of grasping objects or creatures. Rust. The creature causes oxidize, oxidization of metal that uh, touches it. Multi-jointed. Limbs and joints stretch and move further than normal. Uh, multiple hearts, didn't know really what to do with that, I just put down a question mark for now. Um, natural armour, the creature has plate, um, plate, plating or skin that protects it. So, that plating's probably going to be like bone plating, okay? Bone plating, there you go. Um, noxious odour, the creature has a very pungent aroma that causes waves of um, noxious gas to irritate the senses of creatures nearby. Um, sticky, exudes a sticky mucus that um, that things attach to. Super um, metabolism, resistant or immune to energy damage, energy damage or radiation, so that covers a lot of that. Um, Supernatural awareness can detect a lie, illusions, or spirits, and I put etc. because I didn't know what else to add. Uh, symbiosis: the creature has a parasitic swarm living inside it. While the creature is harm, um, hunting, or if it is attacking, the swarm emerges to um, aid it. The swarm helps digest its food. It's a bit complicated, but it's interesting. Um, smell sensitivity. Has very strong um, oscillatory nerves that detect scents a long, a long way off, and is uh, or are hard to detect. So, it's basically super smell. Um, spiky, the creature has spikes growing from its body. Uh, slick, the creature is covered in a slick material or slime. Uh, toothy, the creature has several layers of tooth. I didn't know what they'll do with this, so I just put a, a highlight over it. Telepathy can read a creature's thoughts and emotions. X-ray vision. Uh, needs lead glasses, so basically um, can see it through solid objects. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here, okay. Can see through solid objects. And of course it will follow the same sort of um, criteria. Um, it'll need the same sort of, uh, it'll, it'll run into the same restrictions as normal x-rays. You know, there are certain, you, you can't see through lead and blah 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 Certain levels of uh, concrete you probably wouldn't be able to see through if it's too thick. So there's an awful lot going on here. I'm I'm ready to, to huck it down and uh, do some hard work. I see people are already starting to put their ideas in. 
and um, let's uh, let's see if I can get you started. Uh, now, who have I got here right now? Some people have jumped in. Um, <clears throat> Cameron, I can't I can't remember what it was called, but there is a a native law where a, a Washington Washington of a massive arboreal cat that jumps between trees to get to get fast enough to blast through tree trunks. I am unsure what that is. <laughs> paralyzing touch. Okay. All right. So paralyzing touch. We'll, we'll put it in. Uh, Spirit Wolf has got the first one down. Paralyzing. Lizing. Touch. Okay. Paralyzing touch. Uh, paralyzing. I think that's right. Cool. I got that. Um, I will come back to that. I'm just trying to try to keep up with you people today. Oh, make sure I put it into alphabetical order. Otherwise, lost as a uh, lust I will be. I will be so last. Lust in a ring of. Oh, it's not quite in the right order. No, it isn't quite in the right order. Uh, P goes where? Here. P is here. P for paste. And then multi natural. That's not right. Or did I need to move something else? I O P. Maybe if I, it's probably better to easier to move these two here. Uh, so I will cut these. P should be going after N. Okay, paste. O P O P O P. Okay, right, got it. Todd. Uh, hello, Todd. Um, Todd's also a patron. Uh, eats magic. Is there what can we call that? Eats magic. Because I mean, I can just write down eats magic, which would be e. I guess that's that's what it is. Eats magic. All right. Uh, empathy, empathy. Empathic is emotion. Empathic. Empathic. Empathic is emotion. Empathic. Uh, you've lost me. I'm a little bit lost. Water breathing. Where well, we have gills. Remember, I put down gills. I didn't put it down as water breathing. I put it down as gills. So the creature can breathe underwater. Yep. So that's we've got that. Minor spell casting, the type of druid, arcane, divine. Now nah, skip, skip all of the um, spell casting stuff. That's a different thing in, its, um, in itself. You forget about all of the spell casting bits and pieces. We don't need to do that. Okay. We'll come back to that. Consumes magic items or spells. Well, I think eats magic is kind of doing that already. I like the idea. Don't I just it's just how to describe it. So we'll come back to this. I'm not going to take it away. Just going to like, how do I do that? Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to put a lozenger in my mouth because I'm kind of losing it a little bit. All right. So. Working my way through, there's two two books. I have four books to work from. Okay, good lord, here we go. Um, no, no, no. Um, oh, 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 oh. Um, um, um. Oh, we almost forgot that. I don't have it there, do I? Invisible. Invisible. Nothing worse than having a monster that is invisible. The creature is. Now, I'm not saying, when I say invisible, I'm not saying it's something that you turn on and off. I'm saying they are always invisible. Because there are monsters that are always invisible. A complete pain in the butt to deal with. But I'm putting it down as a trait. The, cre the creature is always invisible and can't be seen with eyes. There we go. 
I've got that. I don't want this. Go away. Thank you. Cool. Can be seen. Seen with eyes. Okay, cool. Got it. Uh, formatting is going to be an interesting one when I get back to this. Um, emits darkness. Emits darkness. Darkness. Okay. So there are creatures that do that all the time, aren't there? So that would be under D. Darkness. The creature emits um, darkness around it. Um... That's all we need to say. I think that covered the darkness pretty easily. Easy peasies. Um, that's boring. Ooh. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm st oh, now I'm thinking of it more. Uh, I do have my monster powers too, people. There are almost 100 monster powers here, probably with some monster traits mixed up in here. Monster powers are things that use your action. The monster traits don't require an action. They're always, they're always there. They're kind of like always on. Okay? Um, but I do have that there if I need to plunk, plunk something in there if I need to. All right, so what else we've got here? Stunning gaze. So stunning gaze, Jack, would be a power. I think that's not some. Is that something that's always going to have it um, be beyond? So even the cockatrice and the um, basilisk have control of their um, of their vision. So I think what it needs to do is not go into traits, but go over into powers. And I I have not put this whole thing into order. So it's probably got stunning stun in here already. If I can find stun in here, then then we're we're all good. Um, but I'll have to go through this one, which will take a little while, and just order it. Confusion, I don't think we've got stun and the powers. Okay, stunning gaze. Um, about how far through should I put it this? It's in here somewhere. I'll put it here. Stunning gaze. Um, the creature stuns other uh, others when it focuses focuses its eyes on them. I guess that's it. That'll do. That's your stunning gaze. It's in the power section, not the traits, though. Okay. Um, emits silence. I, we almost feel like we are duplicating a lot of the stuff we did in the magic item stuff uh, yesterday. Uh, which is, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Particularly if it works. So, Spirit Wolf, I, I don't, uh, I think that's not a bad idea. Spells. Spells absorbed in creatures um, can act, gain AC or hit points. Uh, we have some magic absorption. Do we have magic? We have anti-magic, but we don't have magic absorption. Do we have magic absorption? That would be magic absorption. I don't think we do. That would be a horrible feature to put into a game, though, would it not? Would that be would that be classified as um, a giant um, dick move by a game master? Okay, so we'll do it, eh? Um, <laughs> magic absorption. <laughs> I kind of set myself up for these things. Absorb, absorb. Is that absorption? Okay. And so um, the creature uh, absorbs 
the magical effect becoming more powerful. I think that's really what you're trying to communicate. Um, so this is, would be always on. It wouldn't turn off. It would mean using magic against it. It would be horrible. It would be horrible to deal with a monster like that. But we'll put it in. No problems. Um, but hang on. Here we, so that's uh, so we've got Jack's idea. Galantia, Galantia G, infectious, carries a, like a carrier of infections, can be disease or magical curse. Um, well, I think we do both. I think you've given us two ideas here. Um, Spirit Wolf, I think charm goes, we're going to leave charm in the, uh, in the, the monster powers section. We've got charm. Uh, silence. Okay, so I need to I need to pull pull apart this a little bit. Infectious. Do I have infectious? I don't think I do. Infect. Mm. Infectious. The creature is. Uh, creature is a carrier carrier of different diseases um, how about specific diseases different or let's do both There we go, specific diseases, different or specific, okay, so that's your infectious done, and then, now, now you said something about curse, um, I'm going to put it just under curse, so that would be C for curse, hammerflage, so curse, uh, the creature, Uh, okay, let's go much, much more, uh, any, any, um, any contact, oh, yes, any contact, any con, contact, any contact with the creature, um, um, imposes a curse. God, that would be awful, but let's put that there. So we've got it now. It's done. Emits silence at, at a certain radius. So silence. Yep, okay. So that's going to have to be under S. Silence. Um, 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 there, I think it is. Silence. The creature uh, dampens. D d d d d dam dampens. Sound. Uh, sound around it in a specific radius. I think that's what you were after, correct? Silence. So that would be always on. Awful, awful. <laughs> what do you got here, Matt? And they can sniff your your um, your bum and know your sins. <laughs> I'm not putting that down. Um, <laughs> pungent smell. I think we had pungent smell already. But let me just check. We had something that um, that made him smelly, or was it smelly? Smell sensitivity. Pungent smell. I thought we had something like that. Maybe we didn't. 
Mm. Pungent. Ooh, we must have some more pungent from you. Pungent. So, let's get your idea there, Todd. Pungent. Yeah. Yeah, pungent it is. Pungent. Um... The creature always stinks. Um, stinks making creatures. Uh, causing um, vomiting and nausea. Is that right? Okay. All right. Got it. Toxic odor. I think pungent. Toxic odor. You want to call it toxic odor? Pungent. Pungent or toxic odor? Um, on. Noxious odor. Noxious odor is pungent. So that we actually already have it. We already have something like that. Pungent stinks. Uh, very pungent aroma. So actually, we've we've got that already. Um, I'll just highlight it. I'm probably gonna have to take it out. See, noxious. Odor. See noxious odor. Yeah, I'll probably take that out. Um, but we'll see. We'll decide whether I'm going to call it pungent or noxious odor. I'm not sure yet. Immune to specific weapon types. Not going to put that down. You guys can do that. You don't need a table for that. Like I'm not going to put a table down that says uh, immune to a specific um, damage type. I, I mean, I'm 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 not against having immunity. I just don't want to put it onto this table. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, a table made of, of how much damage you would do. Oh, it's going to do 1d6 or 1d, um, 1d8 or 2d8 or 4d8. Or I just don't want to do that. Um, I, I want it to be a little less like that. Trainable. As a talent, what, what considering I just talked about the Hellhound, right? And that they are trainable. I suppose I know where you're going with this. Um... Yeah, I, I put down the word trainable, but just like you, I think question mark. I'm not sure what to do with it. A trait. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, Jack, it's there. I'm just not too sure what to do with it. Swallow hole um, on a 1920. So spirit wolf, I'm not going to put um, swallow hole because that would be an action. And I'm pretty sure Swallow was already in the powers. Let me just have a look here. Swallow. Yes, yes, yes. Swallow, don't spit. Swallow, 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 swallow. Sheesh. Man, it's going to take a little while to get through this. At least, at least we've done it. Swallow. Eat darkness. Eat darkness. God. Um... Swallow, 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 swallow. Wondrous farts. Swallow. So I haven't got it here. So I'll put it into the powers, powers section. And we kind of needed a few more anyway. Pardon me. So swallow. Um, creature um, swallows its prey hole something like that there we go that's in the power section I've done that one. Oh, camera what do you got here giant frogs have uh, giant tongues 
special sticky um, gross saliva uh, and powerful jaws and even strong stomachs they can also jump very far away quickly on a, a full stomach hmm. oh. intimidation against normal what have we got here have I missed a few things along the way no I don't think that was going anywhere Mit silence, stunning gaze, I got that, I got that, I didn't miss this. Um, trainable, pungent, dissimilar to noxious odor, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly it. When hit, f um, hit for damage, both attacker and target get damage. <coughs> so hang on, when hit, hit for damage, both attacker and target to get damaged. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to put that together. Resurrection. If creature is, isn't burnt or destroyed, it resects, resurrects after 24 hours and rampages. Shit. There are things that do resurrect in games, don't they? Matt, I'll put it in. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it would be an absolute pig to deal with as a player. When things resurrect, it's a, it is a, it's a big deal. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to dispute that we probably should put it here. It probably should exist. So, um, resurrect. Holy Toledo. Let's, uh, I guess we do that. Resurrect. Um, resurrection. Um... If the if the creature now you've said you stipulate if it isn't burned or destroyed, I'm not going to stipulate that. I don't I don't care what you as game masters or dungeon masters do with this. If the creature is killed, killed, it uh, res resurrects after a period of time. I'm not going to stipulate the time frame, I'm just going to say a period of time. You do what you want with it after that. Um, so got that, Matt? Got it done. It's down. Can only be harmed by healing spells. What? Can only be harmed by healing spells. Right. Okay. What do I call that, though? It's going to need a tag name. Okay. Hang on, let's 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 do this. I just should have done this before. So, um, tag name for monster trait and description, please. Okay, let's let's try that. Morale bonus versus any type of. Oh, I'm still regeneration hit body points. Oh, regen. Now, do we have regeneration? Regeneration is like the troll, right? Trolls don't actually have to do anything to regenerate. So we've got resurrection, but got regenerate as well. You good point. We didn't put that in, did we? And regenerate is is the troll. Um. Where are you, you scummy R, start with R. Regenerate. Regeneration. Um, the creature's body parts. Um, are replaced after a period of time. You can make that as short or long as you like. Up to you. Um, oh, I see where you're going with this. Baleful polymorph. Ba so Cameron, baleful polymorph. You have to explain that to me a little bit. I feel like polymorph is a power rather than polymorph. Do we have polymorph as being a thing that they just do all the time? I don't know that there is anything that we've... We, I don't think we've done that. I think polymorph should stay a power rather than a trait. 
I mean, regeneration, resurrection, they're not pretty or awful as, um, as traits as it is. Uh, I'm not saying they shouldn't be there. Like, again, it's just, yeah, polymorph. <laughs> I can hear the little voice in the background singing. <laughs> and she's singing her little song. <laughs> um, sensitive to moonlight or sunlight. Light sensitivity. Do we have light sensitivity? I actually think that is definitely a trait. I, you, I agree. Light. We don't have that, do we? Do you know why we don't have this? It's because Wizards of the Coast has deemed anything that players hate, like uh, light sensitivity, if you're playing a monstrous some um, character, can't have light sensitivity because that would be bad. Players don't like having um, uh, light sensitivity. So we won't have them. Hence, monsters still have light sensitivity. But we forget it. Um, okay, the creature is sensitive to... to sorry, where are we? Moon, light and sunlight. Moonlight, sunlight. <laughs> okay. Have a good time, Amelia. Oh, cool. Okay, when you find. When we come back, mm -hmm. just slime by slime so we don't need any money. Okay. Yes. He has, um, every time I go there, I'm in there. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. You have a good day. Yeah. I'll try not to stand in your pink slime. life of a three-year-old I tell you um, <clears throat> I couldn't do it again myself but um, it's funny to watch somebody else okay all right too cute <laughs> too cute here we go let me have a look at the names that we've got here we've got that there reverse healing damage reverse healing damage um reverse healing damage divine death reverse healing damage okay so Reverse healing damage. I'm I'm not sold on this um, spirit wolf, but I'm putting it down. Reverse healing damage. Reverse healing damage. The creature is injured by healing magic. I think that's what you were trying to get at. Okay, uh, hopefully I got it. Divine death. What is divine death? Undeath. Undeath. Unhealing. Unhealing. Unhealing? Is reverse healing damage or unhealing? Which is... <laughs> both. None of them roll off the, off the tongue. None of them roll off the tongue. Um, but I can see everybody is trying very hard to figure out how to get it in there. <laughs> I'm going to do it like that for now. Okay. Okay, got to start cooking late, um, later, folks. Thank you, Dungeons and Chronics, if you're still here. Thank you for being here. Achilles heel soft spot. Oh, no. Spiked, um, spiked snouting out of the... What? Spiked shooting. Spike. Spiked shooting out of back of the creature. I am... I'm not sure what to do. I don't know what that is. Dark vision. Do we have... I think we've got night vision, not dark vision. And the only reason we put night vision in is um, so we're infrared vision. We have uh, shizes, shizes. We've got X-ray vision. Do we have dark vision or night vision? D 
darkness. In, in, in. No, we don't have night vision. So, yes, it probably does have to have night vision. Okay, yeah. I'm going to call it night vision rather than dark vision. Okay. So, this is... Okay, night vision. The creature can see in the dark. That's it. That'll just put that. That's fine. Okay, next. Uh, I should be taking a break because it's top of the hour, isn't it? Um, life teaching, damage, attacker, touch. Oh, there's too much going on there. <laughs> Spirit Wolf, there's too much going on there. Life leeching, damage, attacker, touch. Too much going on. <laughs> Um, hoarders. Creature can hoard items like shiny or bright things or could have food storage. I don't feel like that's a trait that's part of the creature. I feel like that's a behavior. That feels more like a behavior, which would be cool as part of your lore, but it's probably not part of the trait. We will do a 100 Origins of Monsters. God knows how that's going to work out, but we'll see. Um... This wholesome entertainment brought, brought to you by my favorite mortal. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. If, am I wholesome entertainment? I don't know about that. Creature always speaks in jokes and riddles, causing uncontrollable historical... Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Got, how's it going, Overboard? Overboard is a patron and a moderator, and he's also got a YouTube channel that deals with miniatures and terrain and reviews and a lot of stuff you don't normally see. How's it going, Joe? Uh, <laughs> Uh, top of the hour. It is top of the hour. Uh, Jack, your daughter turns one next week. Okay. I know Amelia's going to be four very shortly. Unable to be backstabbed. Uh, I don't know how to write that. I don't know how to write that. I honestly, I have no idea how I would write that. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. Okay, I'm going to come back in five minutes. I'm going to take my break, get myself sorted, and we will continue. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll see how this, this works out. It, uh, it seems to be coming along. It's coming along. I'm not going to freak out about it because honestly, we'll be back next week doing the same thing again. <laughs> or something new. It'll all happen eventually. Okay, let's get back into, back into it. Oh, something's happening. Voice imitation. Oh, actually, mimic, um, imitation. 
Voice imitation is actually not a bad idea. I actually really like that, Tom Spirit Wolf. It's very clever, actually. Um, let's just make my, my head smaller again. I don't think it needs to be as big as it is. And we switch over to there. Is this the capture? That's the capture. Okay. So voice imitation, uh, print hensile, V, 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 uh, S, uh, T, V, V, X, is it V, X? I can't remember. Voice imitation. Um, voice imitation, the creature can uh, copy another uh, can copy can copy another creature's voice okay I think I mean is that that's essentially what you were after right Enslave body or soul. Holy Toledo. Enslave. 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 Um, enslave soul. Enslave body. Okay. Enslave. E. 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 Enslave. Enslave. Okay. The creature can enslave now now actually I don't want to put it here do you know why I've just realized why the creature can enslave um, the body or soul of others the reason I don't want to put it here as a trait is it's too strong it's too good it's too much I'm taking it out. I'm not getting rid of it, but I'm taking it out. It doesn't belong here. It goes in powers. Okay? I think that's where it needs to live. And slave needs to live there. So we'll put it there. Okay? Uh, so, misleading aura. Aura makes people subject to influence. Uh, let me think about that a bit more. I'm going to go through the powers and see if we can take some of the stuff we put in powers and transfer them over to the traits section. Because there are probably a few that we've created. Anti-Medusa, the camera creature's gaze turns. No, that's, that's the, uh, that's, that's a power. Adrenaline vampire uses fear for as a source of food and energy. No, that's a power. Ambush, no. Enslave, no. Furious, uh, the more wounds the creature becomes, the more damage it deals and faster it becomes. Uh, a trait. No. Um, glide. It can float, fly, or glide for a short time or, or on air currents. Glide. Is it a trait or is it an action? It's not really an action. I think, I think, I think glide is kind of like fly and flight. I'm going to cut it from here. Cut it from here and let's have a look here. We have flight already. G for glide. I'm going to put a, um, a yellow mark on it though, as a, I'm not entirely sure if it's living in the right place. Um, I'm still checking the, so you don't have to worry that I'm not going to be checking what you guys are doing in the chat, because I will. And if I see anything that looks good, then I'll grab it. Um, uh, displacement, harder to hit, displacement. Yeah, because we were talking about displacement with magic items the other day, and you, you're probably right, displacement's not a bad idea. Uh, I wonder, can I, can I cheat and just pour it over from that document, what I had written down? What did I write? I'm sure I, I'm sure somebody had said displacement. We were doing magic items and somebody had written down displacement. Yeah, displacement. Yeah, okay, so there's not much to add to that. It's just the word displacement. Um, so D, displacement, dis, displacement. displacement uh, rough to deal with um, the creature 
the creature's uh, exact location changes and is harder to hit. To make that a trait is pretty brutal. So, I mean, I know you're going from Displacer Beast, so I, I kind of get it, um, what you're trying to do there. So, that, yeah, so I'll, I'll putting it in. <clears throat> that can live there for sure. Okay. Um... Do I need to do that? Do I even need to do that? I'm just wondering. Dual personality. Spirit Wolf has got dual personality. That sounds like a behavior thing. Is that really going to be a trait? I don't know what to do with that. Uh, creature multiplies if, if, if startled or surprised in, uh, in any way. The duplicates are used as a defensive trait. Yeah, I think duplicate needs to live in, in powers. I don't think we put duplicate into, into traits. To, for it to be able to do that without using an action would be just awful. Uh, it's probably best to live under powers. I'll put it there. Um, yeah. Poison sweat. Oh, good lord. Poison sweat, really? Control magnetic field. Um, I think that's a power. We, I think you're falling into powers, people. Hang on, just let me just see if I can pull us apart here. Do we have? Du do I have something that's called duplicate in this one? I'll just write duplicate here. Dup, dup, dup. Is that duplicate? The creature can make multiple copies of itself. Okay, duplicate right now. Uh, ribs pop out of the chest, extending. Now that's that's a power. Shooting poison quills is a power. Regeneration round minute. That we actually had, we've got regeneration already. We've marked it down as a as a trait. So I'm going to take it out of powers. Um, so we'll cut that. Actually, I will go this. Yeah. So we'll get rid of that because we've definitely got regeneration over here, if I remember right. We we had regeneration resurrection. Which are all now traits, but yeah, very powerful. Boys and sweat, control magnetic field. You missed the environment, environmental one. What did I... Uh, Matt, what did I, what did I miss? Misleading aura. Aura makes people subject to influence. Is that what misleading aura? I don't know what to do with that. I know it's supposed to be a trait. I just don't know what... I don't, I'm not entirely sure what to do with that. Let's see if... Uh, let's just come back to that in a second. Let's see. Um, misleading. M, 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 M. Misleading aura. Misleading aura. Misleading aura. Okay. Uh, the aura... Around the creature, creature makes others uh, subject to influence. I think that's what you were trying to say, Aura. I'm going to put a highlight this. I'm not too sure what to do with this. It's there. I feel like we've got something that does that, something similar already. Now the other one. You missed the environmental one. What did I miss? 
who put it in? Um, Divine Death, no. Resurrection, I got that one. Uh, imitation against normal monsters, I wasn't going to use that anyway. Uh, they can sniff your bar and burn. <laughs> I'm lost. Whatever it is, can somebody just pump it in again? Because I'll never find it in the, in the chat. It'll, I'll just, it'll just, it will never, it'll never show up again because I can't see it. I can't figure out how it is. Heightened awareness, unable to be backstabbed. No, we're not going to do that. Um, right. So, leashes a whip-like sticky tendril. No, that's a that's a power. Grows huge pus filled with boils over. No, we're not doing that. Um, um, charm, mind control, no, that's a power. Charm, multiple, no, that's a power. Um, this is why I don't like to see the, the charm is. I feel like it should be. It should stay as a yeah. I know what you guys are trying to do. You're trying to put in something that always works, so you don't have to use an action with your monster to to charm and affect somebody's uh, somebody else that's around it. I know what that's what you, I, I've seen a people, couple of people trying to do that a couple of times. Hence why I'm reluctant to do it, because it would be too much. <laughs> it's like death aura. Monster has death aura. It's a trait. It doesn't require an action. If you become, if you come within 20 feet, you die. <laughs> it's too good. It's, it's not, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it's too good. Um, confusing. No, that's, uh, that's an action. Cloud of monophilian tentacles can breathe. Uh, and I wiggle and slice. No, that's a, that magnetic. It attracts metal. So actually, magnetic. Somebody mentioned something like that. That's actually a trait. I don't think that will be a power, because magnetic is very, very specific, right? So let's let's take this out and put it under M. Magnetic personality. Probably not. Paste it. Magnetic. That's what we we'll need to have there. Okay. Uh, summoning of devils, demons against uh, um, angels and um, modrons. So summoning, that would be a power. So summoning is going over to powers, okay? I think we already got something that does summoning. But we won't know until I arrange that document, will I? Summoning. Um... um uh, the creature summons, what does it summon? Demons, devils, angels, okay, I, I, okay, animals and monsters, there you go, all right, have we got them all? I don't have to put Modrons. I love Modrons, but it doesn't have to be that specific. <laughs> Agile moves quickly and easily, regardless of terrain, especially um, supernaturally fast. Supernaturally. Okay. All right. So. Um, now the other one. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of still lost. <clears throat> All right. So here's... Here's where my head is going right now. Is um, uh, no, 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 Agile. Do I have agile? Spider crawler climbing on vertical horizontal surfaces, including upside down. Does that really require an action? It's not really an action. It's more like part of movement. Actually, that's probably got to go somewhere else. Uh, cut. This is, this is the tricky pit, bit, is trying to figure out which one should go where. But spider crawler, spider climb, spider crawler, spider crawler. There you go. Um, <laughs> where the heck do I stick it? I stick it about here. Spider crawler. That's going to live there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no law. No law? What do you mean? No, I'm not doing law right now. Not today. Agile. I'm just trying to get my head around what to do with the agile thing. Um, 
I'm just, and just mechanically and narratively, how do I make that work? Agile, I'm not sure how to make that work. Agile. Uh, so agile uh, moves quicker. Da, da, da. Well, um, okay, let's let's go over here. Um, I'll put a question mark on it. Is it unfinished? I'm not sure what to do with this just yet. Sort of thing. Paste. Question mark. Highlight. Yeah, I am not I'm not too sure to do that. Borrow or tunneling. Ah, okay, yeah. So burrow. Hustle, speedy. Uh tsh. like we can we can build I don't think that's gonna be part of is that gonna be part of traits? I think that's gonna be that's just gonna be part of your movement speed for your monster, isn't it? Like how fast does the monster move? That's part of that. Does it need to be part of a trait? Um, so burrow though, I suppose burrow makes sense. Clumsy, clumsy. Okay. Now you're just giving me words. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. Spirit Wolf, you're making sure I get to do all the work. Um, this not fair because you guys have done all the work. I'm just arranging things as it is. So I'm trying to reword them. So burrow, 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 burrow. 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 The creature can dig tunnels underground. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's let's go back to the other document and see if I can pull across some more stuff. Um, well, she's it's, it's starting to fill out. It's working. Okay. Uh, has no. If the creature touches a creature, there is a tiny whip. No. Vertical leap ability. Twice body length from standing start. Five times length with running start. God, that. God, I'm mighty. Really. Um, now that's a that's a, that's a, that's an action. Rush charges into creatures with spike bodies. I will leave that. Teleport. Teleport a short distance. No, I wanted to make it a power. I do not want it to become a trait. That would be bad news. Too much. Vapor form can temporarily no. Uh, farts of wonder no. 2D can become temporarily two dimensional. That's an action. Dislocate jaw can unlock jaw. Open its mouth. This is the yeah. Okay. This is this is an action. Can temporarily increase or decrease body weight. No, that's a power. Expand body inflates in size with with balloon sacks. Ah, uh, that's a power. Uh, play possum can fake its own death by slowly body functions. That's a power. Um, it can self-destruct and reform. No, we're making that a power. <laughs> uh, can survive being frozen solid. Now that might be a trait. <sighs> but what the hell do I call it? That's the trait, but I don't know what to call it. That's my problem now. Um, uh, shrink or enlarge. Shrink and enlarge is going to... Something like shrinking and enlarging is going to have to be a power. I don't think it should be... I don't think it should be a, um, an, a, a trait at all. Adhesive spit. We've got something like that. Good for binding and... Uh, yeah, so I think we've got that Cameron in the power section already. Let me just see if I can figure out what to do with this. Now that I look at it, now that I think about this, the more I look at it and the more I think about it, is it's... I mean, it might be a trait, but we can just put that under immunities, which we don't need a table for. So I'm actually going to ditch it completely. So it's gone completely now. Um, shrink or enlarge. I don't know if we had it before, but I'll put it in. Oh, 
Come on. Shrink or enlarge. Okay. Shriek makes a sound that stuns. No, that's power. Vegan has the power of self-assurance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I, I was wondering what that was all about, but let's get rid of that. Um, for those of you who are like, Fred, you can't take that away. Look, I'm not against making a monster or a character that's a vegan. Because I would. In fact, yeah, I won't say anything. Uh, character creation tomorrow. Uh, immune to, but a carrier of diseases. We actually have this already. This is, we, we've actually got that already. Uh, that was infectious. Bloodsucker can survive and, reg and regenerate off of blood, fresh blood. So that's that's a power. Swallow, yeah, that we've got the swallow. The power's there. Shape chain transforms to the form of another creature. That's a power. Um, sleeps clo um, sheep's clothing can gain the memories of, of creatures it consumes. Uh, I feel like that's a power. Uh, blank slate, feed off memories of successful, and loses all memory and has no, that's going to make it a power. Eat darkness, that's a power. Glow in the dark. Glow in the dark may in fact not be something you can turn on and off. Um, Cairo, uh, Cairo protection. I know you're trying to go with this, but I, I think we'll leave it alone. Adhesives, but I'm pretty sure we've got this already. Um, glow in the dark. Now we had this. We had this um, discussion. Attracts flying insects with bioluminescence. I feel like this. <laughs> these go together, don't they? Feel like they go together. Somehow. Um, attracts flying insects with bioluminescence. Um, what did I have here? Did I have bi I'm pretty sure I had bioluminescence already. Yes, I did. So you can already. So we've already got something there, and then we glow in the dark, glows in the dark. So that's we've made it a power as well. I will highlight this as maybe not a power, because I've got bioluminescence. Communicates with communicates with smell and releases a range of body odors. This I'm going to leave as a power. I know that seems a bit strange. Ear walking or running? Ear walking or running? No. So we're going into Michael Jackson mode. Or is it Air Jordan mode? Is that what you want me to write down? You want me to write down um, Michael Jordan mode? Is that what we want here? Here, Michael Jordan mode? Jordan mode. There you go. Because it's a big question, Michael Jordan mode, if you ask me. Um, we have a bioluminescence trait, I think. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I, I know. I'm pretty sure we did. Um, let me just go back to this. Glows in the dark, communicates with smell, and releases. No, I don't like this. Electrical skin gives off electrical current through skin membranes. I don't know if I want to make that a trait, though. This is a this is a big question. I, I I'm mm, really not too sure that's a great idea. I feel like it's something you should do. Even an electrical eel can choose to discharge electricity. It doesn't always do it all the time, does it? Hard skin. Skin hards in response to physical trauma. No, that's a power. Uh, metallic. It can harden that skin by consuming ores. The strong. That's a power. Sprays mind controlling spores. Power capable of deep sea living, cold pressure. Um, that's a trait, isn't it? I don't know what to call it. What do you call that? Being a so deep sea living, so cold, high pressure. It is a trait, but how does that work? I mean, it's always going to be on. It's always there. But how do we transfer it into a tag name? What the hell do I call that? Explosive at death. We've already got exploding, being able to explode when you die. We've got that in the power section. Not going to be a trait. Definitely not. Just because I put Michael Jordan mode, it doesn't mean I'm going to put down every silly thing that comes up. 
<laughs> spirit wolf uh in the spirit of fun i can only say that's that's the name is so suitable metal r turns to rubber on contact oh my god really okay um what do i call that have we got a tag name for that one let's just put this here for now See, you can tell I'm not being serious about Michael Jordan mode because it's out of, it's not in alphabetical order. Capable of deep sea living. What the heck would a tag name for that be? I don't know. I don't know. I am very unsure about that one. Very, very unsure. Am I blocked? I don't know. Have you put a word in that is um, offensive, dude? You may have used a word that's a problem. If you've tr typed something in and it's not coming up on my phone, I don't know. You, you, I mean, it's possible that you might be blocked, blocked for certain words. Uh, but if you're able to comment now, you shouldn't be blocked. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see anything that you put in. So it's got to be a keyword that I've put into YouTube and said, I do not want to see that word. Um... And all of the swear words are already in there usually, so you can't put them into a live chat. Because YouTube really hates that during live streams as it is. And it also gets out of hand. Um, so that's maybe a possibility. Maybe there's a word you're using that it's deemed as um, a problem. I'm not sure. Because I haven't seen it come up yet. Anyway, let's keep going uh, through this list. If I can, if I can de if I can take all the traits out of this, that might help a lot. Can inflates gas sacks and hover in the ear that's an action uh perfect uh, vocal mimic perfect vocal mimic can perfectly make no so that that is actually a power and we had something somebody had mentioned it. voice imitation can copy any other group of the voice i feel like that is they are the kind of the same aren't they and I'll put this one, Perfect Vocal Mimic, as a thing that they do. Okay. All right. So we'll take that one out. We've got, we've kind of already got that. I think we'll leave it under powers rather than traits. Okay. Uh, raw sodium explodes when in contact oxygen. I don't know what that's all about. Sentient limbs. No. Uh, adrenaline. It can increase its speed. No. Uh, that's power pest hive mind uh, pest hive mind control actions that's power the ventriloquist can throw a voice up to 30 feet that's a power uh, thermal thermal sense thermal sense can detect heat variations like like I think we've got infravision already uh, I'm, I'm sure that under your yeah, infra, infrared vision we've already got heat vision going on here so let's thermal sensors. So we'll take this one out. That's gone. Okay, here we go. Uh, touch transformation metal to rubber, glass to wood. Um, I think it's under powers. Transformation like that, I put it under powers, not a trait. I don't think it should be a trait. It's, it's, it's yeah. No, yeah, no swear words. That's that's the one. Corrupts environment. Corrupts environment. Okay, so that's that's a nice tag name, but what does it do? I'm not sure exactly how to put that together. Deep sea living um, could be abyss, abyssal, abyssal creature like um, after the abyss. Yeah, I just don't know what to call. What would that? What would that? What would it be a good tag name for being able to live at in the cold at at um under uh, extreme pressure. I'm not sure what you would call it. Radiates sensation allure. Radiates sensation allure, deep sea. Radiates sensation allure. I feel like we've got an aura that sort of allures you already. Um, didn't we have something like that already? Uh, shh. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Darn it. I know we've got something that somebody had mentioned. I just I just can't find it now. 
Shizers. Uh, no. Sorry about this, people. I am a, I'm a little, yeah. I feel like we're going back over the same old stuff now, and I just can't find them to figure out where I've put it. I know somebody said something like this, and we put it somewhere. I know it's there somewhere. I just can't see it right now. Okay. Um, whatever it goes, wherever it goes, environment changes and becomes hostile. That's very complicated. I don't know how to word that. I'm not entirely sure how that would work. Let me think about that a bit more. Uh, okay. It can remove its bones from its body and use them as tools and weapons. Oh my god. Um, reproduce if sliced in half. Pathogenous. Oh, this is not. This is this is a trait. Oh my god! I this is the um, this is the is it the ochre jelly or the the black pudding that splits? I think it's the ochre jelly. This has definitely got to be a um, an AJ Pickett because he's given me the exact name of it. <laughs> um, it's got to be AJ Pickett. I know it for sure. So let's put it there. I think that is a trait. It's always going to work. Parthiogenesis. Okay, so that's that's a trait. Okay, we'll put it there. All right. Oh. It's all by the creatures. Grows new head. No, that's a power. It has an extreme dimensional pouch. Superior pouch. Uh, Dad, I'm going to put a highlight on that one. I'm not sure what to do with that. I don't even know what to call it, frankly. Where do I leave it? Do I leave it here? Do I not leave it here? Asexual reproduction. <laughs> I think we can leave that alone. I don't know what to do with this either. <laughs> Asexual. I feel like we're going into the law aspect rather than the power section, but it's a muddy it's a muddy water. When in the area lights dim. When in the area lights dim. Oh, okay. Okay, so changes. So so Jack, you were trying to say like so what would that be called? What can we call it? If if it's able, is it, it absorbs energy. I really what we're talk, talking about is absorbing energy. Okay. Let I think I can. I think I've worked that one out. Um. um uh, no. Ab. Ab my something. Absorb. Absorb. Energy. The creature can absorb um, in a, energy into its body. Into its body, including light. I think that's what you were trying to do here. Now, the question is... Is this a trait or a power? I think what we'll do is we'll leave it as a trait. And as long as you, the, the, the only warning I would say about having absorb energy as a trait is you cannot have absorb energy mean that if they f throw a fireball at it, that the fireball gets absorbed into its body and does nothing. Because that, I mean, that would just be, that would be a, a giant ass of a thing to deal with. Like if every energy thing that they throw at them in terms of magic can always be absorbed, it would be awful. Do you know? But if it's absorbing light, uh, yeah, it just depends on how powerful you make something like that. I think that's the thing. So I'm not going to put it under powers at this present time, although I'm going to highlight it as a, a sticky problem. I might need to uh, massage that a little bit more. So yeah, I think I think that's what we'll do. We'll leave it as a trait. It's just whatever you do with it, do not get carried away. Uh, akin to the black pudding. Um, creature's blood is made up of something akin to the black pudding. What the heck is black pudding made up of? It's basically acid blood, isn't it? Isn't that what we're dealing with there? Acid blood? Um, I'm going to just highlight this for now. I don't think, I think we've covered this already. Constantly, 
oozes mucus, allergic to normal atmosphere, don't know what to do with that. Uh, spawn ally can spawn, no that's a power. Creature can attack physically, ethereal, no that's a power. Uh, can perform on one dot, no power. Fire breath power creates a force field from, no power. Sings causes visual power. Boneless can fit through small spaces. We've already got something that's kind of like that. Boneless can fit through small spaces, escape restraints, survive impacts. and It's actually not a power. That's a trait. It's a frightening one. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's a frightening one, but it's definitely a trait. Um, boneless. Boneless, spineless, spineless, boneless. Paste. How are we doing today? Oh, we're in a 72 range. We're not doing too bad considering everything. This was probably a good good way to go is to port things from the power section over to here. Astral movement. Astral movement feels like that's a power. Lava walking. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Um, so let me just put down these. Astral movement and lava walking are not going to be traits. <laughs> I think they're going to live somewhere else. Really, what you're talking about now is astral movement is is more um, plane shift, plane shifting. I, I don't disagree with giving plane shifting abilities to a monster. I think it's a good idea. I think it's absolutely give them the gate, give them plane shift, uh, plane shift, but make it a power, not a trait. You know what I mean? Plane shift. The creature can travel. Travel to different planes of existence. Um, plane shift. Okay. Lava walking. Good lord. Become more intelligent. If uh, okay. So let's. Where did I get up to? Or sodium? No. 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 Um, Fire breathing, no. Um, tagging saliva, tagging saliva. I think that's a power. Singing cause of no um, ability to melt steel with just a touch. I think that's a power. Petrifying. That's a power. Healed by increasing cell activity. No, no, no. That's healing. No, that's power. Um, miracle work. Wounds removed. That's a power. Um, species shift temporarily change victim into another species. That's a power. Dig, the creature can burrow. And, ah, so we got dig. That's what I needs to be called. It's just dig. We called it burrow, and I called it dig here. So this is the one I wanted to cut. So we'll go back to here. And instead of calling it burrow, I think we just dig. Dig is probably a better idea. Dig it. Dig. Do you dig me? Do you dig something? No, you don't. Dig. Paste. Dig. The creature can burrow into loose soil. That's fine. Uh, soul thief. The ability to attempt to steal a creature's soul. We kind. Of, this is. I knew this was a power thing. This is why I was concerned about that one. Ability to fight after death. Can we? I don't know what to do with that. Time weaver. The creature can manipulate time to a small degree. That's a power. Wind strider. The creature can walk on air. There's the air Jordan thing. So no, we're going to leave. <laughs> um, we're going to leave that. In the power section for now, I think. Um, that's so wind strider strider. The creature can walk on air as if it were solid surface. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll get rid of uh, Michael Jordan mode, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put wind strider. Are we happy? I don't know. <laughs> um, and I don't. My my alphabet is uh, is. It's getting lost here along the way. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. So let's just put this here. Paste. Wind Strider. There we go. There's the Wind Strider. Um, ancient Hour. I can take control of any golems. No, that's a power. Uh, rots wood if, if any wood comes within 20 feet. That is a trait. But, uh, 
actually, should it be a trait and should I expand it? That would be pretty awful though. Is that, I don't know, I feel like that might that might fall into being a complete ass as a, as a dame, you know, game master or dungeon master. Rot. Um, the creature rots, 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 organic, roots, not roots, rots, rots, is that not rots, rots, uh, matter, if, If it, if it, if it comes within a specific range, radius, radius, rot, okay, water allergy, pass without trace, uh, walk through, through rock. Well, we've got kind of like a corporal. Uh, I see what you're doing there, though. Um, adrenaline jumping. Lava walking. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, uh, my. The creature can move through other dimensions. The creature can, can see through other dimensions. These are... See through... See, see into other dimensions. So a creature can move through dimensions i feel like that's an action it's very strong it's one of the strongest things you could do but we can take this supernatural sight we could do this though we go cut and we'll call it supernatural awareness and i will tack it onto the here supernatural awareness paste um Solutions, other, dom other dimensions or spirits. Okay, that, that's enough. No, that didn't help. I'm trying though. Okay, cool. All right, <laughs> let's just see. Oh, okay, so I'm out of time. I should be getting on my on my bike. But let's just make sure I've scaled across anything that here that should be in the trait section. Water walking, can walk on water just like solid ground. I don't know that I want it to be a trait that they can do that. Well, actually, there's some creatures that just do that, don't they? It probably should be over there. Okay, monster scales can become as hot as a burning embers. No, not going to be a trait. Stunning, no. A Moses leech, no. No, that's power. When a is damaged, it temporarily becomes a corporal. No. Emits um, infertility or certainly radiation. Good lord. Um, seeing in the creature's area slowly twists and deforms you. No. Multiple limbs. No. Water walking. We'll take water walking and we will put it into traits. Because um, you have put that, uh, you've mentioned it a few times. I'm sure you have. Walk through stone, walk through, walk on water. Five minutes. Yeah, it's going to take me at least five minutes just to close all the windows in the house, which is half the problem. Um, let me just do this. Uh, I think that's right. Paste. Okay. So, uh, water allergy. No, drink the next one will occur. Penalty, no. Insomnia, the creature doesn't need to sleep. Insomnia. Actually, insomnia would be a trait. Would it not? It's not something you kind of do. So that's actually, it's weird, um, but insomnia. A I I I I I I I insomnia. Something like this insomnia that is a trait so there we go we'll put it there binding the creature passes um pulse in order to no uh it's blinding uh yin yang no okay so that is so there's a few powers that we need to sort of i need to sort out this here but the trait section is looking a lot healthier than it was before um there are a few that are sort of kind of questionable but I, I'm pretty confident that by next time the trait section should be done. Which of course we can finish next next week, same time, same day, same bat channel. Um, 
and hopefully I can uh, oh, okay there's a few spaces that I wasn't expecting not expecting those spaces but uh, pulling it all together a lot of yellow marks but that's 72 so we, we've done it we've done a pretty, a pretty good job I, I mean I don't feel like it's, it's been a an un useful time we've actually got a lot down and uh, I feel like I'm narrowing it down to something a bit more useful Spirit Wolf you have been like a machine throwing stuff at me in the end actually I, I, I realized I just needed to go through the other list and port the stuff over that I hadn't ported over so if you see a few things and you think why didn't Fred put down that idea because I mentioned it before it's just because I, I'm like I've got to make sure I, I tidy these things up and I've got to put them into alphabetical order otherwise it's going to be a disaster um, and I think that's uh, that's one of the big jobs with the, the powers is just going through and trying to put everything into alphabetical order so we know what we have and what we don't have um, in any case it's been a it's been a it's been a time uh, look frankly if anybody's been here and, and 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 like the process of what we do I do this every week like it's it's a it's a common thing I will cover I don't know I haven't decided I might talk about the harpy next week. I might talk about the cyclops. I don't know yet. It, it may well be the cyclops, for all you know. You, you never know of these things. But in any case, i I got to get myself moving. So I want to say a big thank you to um, everybody who's uh, been watching. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons who support me on Patreon. All the stuff I do here will go up onto Patreon. might take a couple of weeks or a month or so, but it will be going there for sure. Okay, that's the intention. We make stuff to go there. And um, and that includes my presentations. Uh, I want to thank everybody who took part in the, the poll, in the live stream poll, and has been typing furiously in the comments section, giving me as many ideas to write down as I possibly can. Uh, I want to thank uh, Spirit Wolf and Cameron. You, you've you worked very, very hard, particularly and Matt. You've all been trying to work very hard to give me ideas, and it's great. Uh, thank you to everybody who's just, uh, if you weren't part of the, uh, the the poll or you didn't take part in the in the comment section for the live stream, just thank you for watching or re-watching the, edit um, the edited stuff or the live uh, content. I appreciate it. Or watching the uh, the edited videos and those shorts. I know shorts videos can be a bit of a pain. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm getting better. I, well, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> so wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, keep making your own stuff. And until next time, keep rolling those 20s. Yes, Wolf, I can see you were trying to get everybody else to get uh, to throw some ideas in there. We're getting to the point where it's getting harder and harder, I think. 